What I'm going to introduce today to you is the data curation service of, of Clary. Let me tell you something about Clarin uh, to start with. Uh, Clarin uh, ML, um, for which the Data Curation Center was open, is part of the large European uh, project Clarin, which was also briefly mentioned by Peter Wittenberg just now. Um, Clarin um, aims to design um, a research infrastructure for, um, um, that is needed to provide an e-science working environment for um, um, the humanities uh, in general and for the linguistics in specific um, so that researchers in that environment can um, uh, share data but also retrieve data from others. The task of the data curation center in, in this respect, um, coming to that part right now, so that was clear now, and that's the data curation service, is exactly that Lying around, there is much, much data for researchers which is not um, uh, accessible to other researchers right now. Um, and researchers, um, in fact, um, um, could use this data if, if, it's, if it's accessible to other ones. So uh, what the data curation service is doing, and what its task is to curate these resources <coughs> held by these researchers, assisting uh, Claren and L data centers with curation, and advising researchers um, uh, who undertake curation themselves. Um, now, back to the big picture, what you see here is a staircase, in fact, which is uh, down to earth the research project, and up the staircase there's the data uh, center, which has to store the data, and then in the best possible way to make it accessible to other users as well. Um, and what the data curation center does the data curation service is helping this data to move along this staircase up to this safe haven of uh, uh, data uh, storage. Okay, uh, so when we start downstairs, uh, which is the research data, um, um, there are a couple of questions to be asked first because if there is data lying around. Um, the um, curation of it is dependent on whether at all it is desirable to be curated and whether it's feasible. So and there are many, um, a number of factors in identifying, uh, determining that. Um, first of all, there's the uniqueness of the, of the research, uh, resource and its relevance. Um, relevance in the sense that um, it is identified as a, a resource which is not much available yet. Um, for example, in, um, um, we can be sure that in Clarin, where we have these open calls for data curation, some of these uh, projects um, are um, denied, are not approved because of uh, other projects being more important, but they still do have interesting uh, data. And a data curation service is exactly in place to restore, to curate that type of data. Um, also, uniqueness plays a role. Sometimes, uh, people come with data, but that's already available under another name or in another way, so this has to be sorted out first. Uh, then we have the urgency of the data to be curated. Um, we have issues here of, um, well, researchers going on to retirement or uh, data stored on, on, on media which uh, do not have to live any uh, much longer. So that's important for that uh, aspect as well. Uh, then it's important to have it, whether it's feasible to do the document and to do with the curation. <coughs> is there documentation on the database? Is there expert knowledge? Is there, is there, are researchers still around to uh, help us in, in doing this task? Are there tools, um, if they are described as part of, uh, of the curation, okay, but what can we do with these tools? We need the uh, uh, documentation and information about that. So. One of the things that is especially important is the IPR, uh, the property rights. Are these well uh, cleared? Are there informed consent forms on the data? Are there licenses? Is it possible uh, at all to make the data public for the public in general or for other researchers? We've had a very interesting um, um, uh, uh, resource with police and court interrogations very interesting stuff and we were asked to curate it um, and uh, when it turned out it, it was really the fact that 
there was no IPR, nothing was settled for that day. In fact, that we were looking at it, where it was even an infringement of the IPR. So um, we have to be very careful with that. <coughs> okay, well then the data uh, itself, what we uh, encounter is typical sound uh, fragments, audio files, transcriptions, texts, and annotations, and sometimes videos as well. So what we do as a data creation center, we take care that these data are uh, um, uh, converted to formats that are acceptable within Clarion um, and, and are performing to the standards of Clarion. Um, then we go uh, look at the metadata and, and we have to make sure that this metadata uh, is well defined to start with. Um, what we use is ISOCAT profiles to get, the, to get that done. ISOCAT profiles um, um, are ISO certified metadata elements, and these are used within Clarion. So we have to make sure that the metadata that is available for the resource, um, in fact, um, is converted to that type of metadata, and we build uh, profiles for that, which can be used later on for other uh, data uh, collections as well, which are similar. So, this is uh, really trying to, to build the standards and build a collection of metadata um, uh, that's interesting for this. Um, so then the end, it goes to the Claren Data Center. Uh, Claren Data Centers in the Netherlands are typically the Max Planck Institute, to mention one. DANS, uh, also uh, uh, represented at this conference, um, is, is another one. Um, so we are, not a data, we are not a data center ourselves, we just guide the data up to such a um, uh, data center. Um, okay, and what's made sure in the data center is that um, the data is referable, accessible, and citable in the end. Um, <coughs> what is added to the data are uh, persistent identifiers, which is a very important means to make sure that the reference to the data remains uh, permanent in, in the future, at least. 50 years, as I'm told. So this is uh, one of the aspects that is also relevant for that. Um, and here I give you some uh, some details about where you can find more information about the data curation uh, service. And uh, thank you for your attention. <coughs>